Hi guys, welcome to Heidi's Fish Tanks. I just did a video the other day about my top five nano fish for beginners, and I thought I would go ahead and do a follow up of freshwater nano fish that I would avoid, or they aren't necessarily gonna be nano fish, but they're going to be fish that sometimes are put in a nano tank that I don't think really belong there, or they are nano fish, but I wouldn't recommend them for someone who's brand new starting out. So I'm gonna start with number five, and I'm gonna go with a Scarlet Baddest, or sometimes it's called a Dario Dario. These things are beautiful, and I actually really, really want some. Um, and honestly, they can go in very, very small tanks. They're not very large. They are similar to betas in that they can live alone. They don't necessarily need a school, or you can keep them in a species-only tank. The reason why I would avoid them is a couple of reasons. One, they're kind of hard to get a hold of. Um, two, they're really difficult to feed. Some of the other fish that I'm going to talk about are even more difficult to feed, but I think most of the time when you're new and starting out, you're wanting to start out with fish that can easily take prepared food like flake food, um, freeze-dried food, those kinds of things. And for the most part, my understanding based on research, now I haven't actually kept a scarlet baddus, so Keep in mind that this is what I have heard on the internet, and the internet is not always reliable. Don't trust me just because I have a YouTube channel. But the thing that has had me be reluctant is I've heard from people who have kept them that have said it is very difficult for them to keep them with anything other than completely by themselves um, because they're very slow, timid feeders and tend to get out-competed for food. So while I do think a Scarlet Baddest would make a really, really great species only nano tank or even go into a pretty small tank, um, I wouldn't want to mix it with anything else. And I think most of the time you do want to put some other things in your tank. Um, number two, it's going to be a licorice gourami. Now I had looked into them a little bit when I was first setting up my tank. And again, they're really difficult to get a hold of, but sometimes you can't even get them to eat frozen food. Sometimes all you can get them on is live food. If you want to see what these guys look like, Rachel O'Leary um, just recently did a species spotlight on them and it makes me want them really, really bad. But they are threatened and so I don't think that it's ideal if you are just starting out to be taking a species that hasn't really um, had much success breeding in captivity. Um, that is also threatened in the wild. I think that this is the kind of fish that a more advanced aquarist should be keeping and should be trying to breed because of that threatened status. And also the fact that it is kind of difficult to feed. Um, I again think it wouldn't go very good in a community tank. One thing that is kind of cool about them, as Rachel was saying, that you could actually keep a pair of them in a two and a half gallon, which is a very small tank. Um, so it's something that I'm thinking about, and I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying if you've never had fish before, you might want to avoid Number three is going to be a pea puffer. I absolutely love my pea puffer, and I have a species-only tank for him, and um, it is super duper cool. The thing that I love about it is that particular tank is really, really heavily planted, which means that my nitrates are very, very low, and I don't often have to do water changes. Pea puffers, I've heard mixed things about whether or not they can go into a community tank or not. Personally, I have tried it and have not had success. Um, I had it attack some of my rasporas, um, but I have heard other people that have had success. I think that similar to a beta, if you're going to try a pea puffer in a community tank, you need to have a backup plan. So in my case, when I tried it and I saw it was being aggressive, I was able to immediately remove it and put it back into its own specific tank. Um, the nice thing about these is they've got a lot of personality, they move a lot, but I really think that a five gallon is probably the best tank for them if you're doing just one, and you don't see them very much in a five gallon tank, especially if it's heavily planted, which is what they really prefer. I don't think that they stand out quite as well, and again, it's hard to get them on to um, prepared food. Um, I have mine on frozen spirulina brine shrimp, and um, frozen bloodworms, but I haven't been able to get it to take flake food or freeze-dried food at all. Um, and I was also breeding snails for it. Most puffers do need snails in order to grind their beak down. The nice thing about pea puffers is they don't necessarily need that. But overall, I think that 
they're a little bit trickier to keep than some of the other fish that I listed in my last video. Now, the last two that I'm going to go with are not necessarily not beginner fish. I think that they make great fish for beginners, but I don't think that they belong in the tanks that they usually are advertised are. And they're both going to be a type of glowfish. Um, the glowfish tetra and the glowfish tiger barb. Now, if you guys don't know what glowfish are, they are genetically modified um, tetras, tiger barbs, and then there's also danios. Um, particularly the tiger barb is going to be my number one, but I also think that glow, glow fish tetras, which are different than the glow light tetras, those are, are different, and I think glow light tetras could probably do okay in a smaller tank. Um, they've been genetically modified, they breed true, so they're not like some of these other glow animals that have been tattooed or painted or whatever. It, they're kind of cool, and especially if you have kids. I know a lot of people who watch me have kids. I think that glowfish are super duper cool fish. Um, but I have kept both the tetra version and the tiger barbs, and the truth is, and even the danios, the truth is that they really belong in a large school, and they get kind of substantial, and especially with the, the tiger barb versions, they need a very large school or they get very, very aggressive. And every glowfish tank that I've seen, the largest glowfish official tank is 10 gallons. Some of them go all the way down to like a one and a half. And I would not keep any of the glowfish fish in a one and a half. Um, but in order to keep that kind of fish happy, because essentially it's just the same thing as like a black skirt tetra or a tiger barb, but it glows, um, in order to keep those fish happy, I really think that they need a larger tank. Maybe I would do a 10 gallon with only the Tetras in it, but really I, I think that they need larger tanks. I've kept them in 29s and the larger the school, the more peaceful they are. So I think glowfish are super duper cool and I actually think glowfish tanks can look pretty, pretty cool. Um, I think they're a little overpriced. But if you have kids, I think like a glowfish tank with like a beta or some guppies or something in it can be pretty cool. But I just think that they shouldn't be kept in nano tanks and so often they are. So they are hardy and I do think that they're good for beginners. I just think that they should be in larger sized tanks. So those are my top five uh, fish, nano fish to avoid for a nano tank if you're a beginner. I'd love to hear you guys down below what are some fish that often end up in nano tanks that you don't think belong there or tanks or fish that are appropriate for nano tanks that you really don't think are best for beginners. Let us know down in the comments and if you are new here be sure to hit the subscribe button so the next time I do a video you'll know and actually the bell next to the subscribe button will make sure that you never ever ever miss a video. Also let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next. I did see a comment on my last video saying that you guys would like to see a little bit about salt water. And here's what I'll say. I've kept fish for 23 years and have always been terrified of salt water. And it is a much easier than I originally thought. My goldfish tank takes way more work than my salt water tank. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.